You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Did you see a heartbreaking documentary called Seattle is Dying or the follow-up video of that done by Como also and Eric Johnson, which was the fight for the soul of Seattle? Have you seen either one of those? We're going to talk about it. I think most people have, and I haven't really talked about it a ton here on the podcast. I did record a podcast, but due to technical difficulties, mainly my screw up, that one never hit the air. And so when I saw this article come through, and this is an article from KATS 94.5, Yakima's Rock Station. Now, Yakima is a town to the east of Washington. It's on the other side of the mountains from Seattle. So it's kind of, you know, it's a different land. And so they're kind of on a different news schedule over there. And apparently one of their networks just aired Seattle is Dying. And I thought this was a really good article because a lot of people have seen these um, documentaries and they're both done by same guy, Eric Johnson, through Como News which is a little bit more on the conservative side of things as far as news reporting goes. And they showed a pretty dramatic and a pretty hardcore scene of what is going in Seattle. The just basically utter lawlessness, the massively overrun with drugs, homelessness, just how the city is, you know, certain areas not doing that great. Let's jump on into it. Before I do, if you're new here, thanks for being here. My name is Sean Reynolds. I'm the owner of a couple of real estate companies, but I read the news on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast that you want to hear and you want to watch. Let's go. So did you hear the heartbreaking Seattle is dying documentary? It's always so dramatic, but what's going on in Seattle is dramatic and a lot of other cities, same thing. It's just, ugh, this isn't good. Is Seattle dying is the question mark it leads off with. Is Seattle already dead? That's the other one. A lot of people kind of giving up on it. Yep, it's going to be the next. It's going to be the next Detroit, Detroit 2.0. I don't think so, and I've talked about that. But um, yeah, there's definitely some similarities. What's happening in the downtown cores of some of these progressively led cities, aren't there? Just like ah, that's not good. No, it's not. According to a new investigative report from Como News that was rebroadcast in Yakima and Tri Cities um, last night, Wednesday. The heartbreaking answer might already be known. As I was scrolling through my personal social media sites the other day, I noticed a significant number of people posting and commenting on the 90-minute special titled The Fight for the Soul of Seattle. I thought I'd already watched it on YouTube, but apparently this video is an update from a piece done by journalist Eric Johnson from March 2019 called Seattle is Dying, but it but there's a new one that just came out pretty recently. When I got home, I popped it on and was heartbroken but what I, by what I saw and heard. If you guys haven't had a chance, if you are interested in the kind of things that I talk about fairly often um, because of their impact on Seattle, Portland, other cities that have this going on, and I tie it into the whole real estate thing, but it's a human thing as well. And that's what real estate really is. It's perception by human beings of what something is worth, right? And in these areas where you've got all this craziness going on, and this craziness is ever expanding, getting further and further out, if you want to kind of see a a hard hard look at what's happening, watch these two documentaries. And I believe I I watched the Fight for the Soul of Seattle on YouTube, and I believe uh, Seattle is Dying is also there. And uh, if nothing else, It's kind of one of those, oh my gosh, you can't look away. This is so horrific. They're dramatic. Granted, they are dramatic. But so is the scene of what's happening in Seattle. I read news stories all the time about people getting shot, people getting stabbed, people being killed, left for dead, left and right. We've got, I mean, it's just, it's ongoing. It's it's never ending. Because you've got all this stuff going on that creates these situations where this kind of crime is happening. You can kind of say, oh yeah, but Seattle's a big city. You're going to have a certain percentage of that. But no, the gun violence going on in Portland, I just recorded a podcast on how they are off to a record setting year in 2021 for gun violence, not what you want to be known for. You don't want to have those shootings increase, you want to deescalate, you want to reimagine, you want to rethink. Yes, you want to imagine those numbers going down, but they're not they are going up crazy. So when I got home, I popped it on and was heartbroken. But what I saw by what I saw and heard, I showed it to my wife and she was horrified. You see, we were both born in the Seattle area. Me, she, the the reader, uh, the article person here, article person, (laughs) the writer of the, 
the post. Uh, Ryder was in Lake City, which is to the northeast of downtown Seattle by not much. Um, not a lot going on in Lake City. Sorry for anybody um, living in Lake City. And then wife was Federal Way, which is uh, down south down south of downtown Seattle by probably a half an hour drive. Um, and still, we still have tons of family and friends in the west side of the state. Because of the pandemic and life in general, we haven't been over there nearly as regularly as we used to. A lot of people haven't. And that's why I think some of this stuff has just exploded because there's no people going into these areas except the people who live there. And guess what? A lot of it is the homeless, right? And the people that serve as the homeless with drugs. That is who is there because all the worker bees from the big high rise offices, they aren't there. Anybody who has lived there and has tried to get out, they aren't out there because they are moving somewhere else. Um, so you've just got this situation that's just out of control. And then we can't really do anything as far as sweeping the homeless encampments. Because according to the CDC, that would spread the Rona like there's no tomorrow, except for the fact that so far in Seattle, we've only got 15 cases that have come out of the homeless encampments, 15 out of a population of somewhere between five and 10,000 homeless people. What's going on there? Don't really know. Homeless are immune to the Rona? I'm not sure. Maybe it's just as well. Um that they haven't been coming over after seeing the squalor that many are living in, especially in downtown Seattle. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this is I want to raise awareness for both of these documentaries. I think even if you don't believe half of it, I think they are interesting and you need to take a look because there are some things that are pretty, pretty drama ridden. But again, it's kind of harsh what's going on. I was in Denny Park here not long ago, shooting just what's what it looks like and you know, it's a tent town. It is literally a, you know, it's tent city. It's just a whole bunch of tents in the middle of an urban park, in the middle of high rises just around it. I mean, just high rises. And there's just this, you know, whole bunch of people. I mean, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like, you know, a whole bunch of people going camping, but not in very good style, because these are not the greatest tents at all in, in the world. And um, it's rough. It's just really rough. And I was there during a massive rainstorm. It was just brutal. It was just no way for people to live. A couple of years ago, my wife and then 10-year-old son went to a Mariners game on a Sunday afternoon. We bought some tickets, but the gates weren't going to open up for another couple of hours. So we decided to park our car and walk up to Pioneer Square. That would be a no-go now. You would not want to take your 10-year-old kid, and you certainly wouldn't want to probably take your wife. Although, I mean, if you are a thrill seeker, go ahead, by all means. Walk, say, a mile from Soto, which is short for south of the Dome, even though the King Dome is long gone. Walk from Soto up to Pioneer Square. See how that goes. Mm, not good. That is some of the heart of... The difficult areas, and by difficult, I mean homelessness is rampant. That's where all the RVs are, vans that don't don't run, tents on sidewalks. I mean, it's just it's hardcore. So they walked up to Pioneer Square, which is I don't know, is it a is it a mile, something like that, maybe further, depending on where they started. As we did, we noticed something that we hadn't seen before. The propensity of folks that were sleeping slash passed out right in the middle of the sidewalk or on the threshold of the entrance to businesses was astounding. Mind you, it's not as if we've never seen this before, but it was historically relegated to alleyways and such, meaning it wasn't so much out in the open. That was five years ago, and it has gotten way worse since then. And I, I go to Mariners games too. I go to Mariners games. I go to mm, Seattle Sounders, which is soccer. I haven't gone to many Seahawks games because I don't know, it just seems like kind of crazy. Um, I go to a lot of music concerts in downtown Seattle because that's where a handful of venues are where they have them. And it has just progressively gotten worse to the point where I pay my 20 or 25 bucks for secured parking because you leave your car in the, you know, in one of the free spots, maybe a little further out. I used to like to do that. You may come back to your car window being smashed out and they would have taken whatever from your car that 
probably isn't worth anything, but it's worth their try because they know that even if they get caught, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to send them right back on the streets. And that's even if they get booked and or charged, probably not. I mean, criming is just an ongoing, you know, hobby for these guys that actually it's more of a profession, isn't it? Because that's how they um, it's how they're getting their money to so their next fix. And that's a harsh way to look at it. And it's not everybody. Obviously, there are families that are down and out of luck that have had to hit the streets. But those from what I can tell and from what I see and from what I hear are few and far between. So if that was five years ago, it appears this has gotten much worse, much was worse in Seattle. And it has. But remember, it's not all of Seattle. And that's what I try and tell people. And that's what people hit me up with all the time is, man, it looks like Seattle is just terrible, terrible. It's, it's not that big of an area, it's contained to a certain area, not contained, but it's, it's in certain areas where you have services basically for the homeless. If you don't have services within walking distance, guess what, those people aren't necessarily gonna go there because they don't have cars. They're walking, and they're not walking that far because most of them are not in that great of condition. Don't want to have to walk that far. Um, so it's it's happening, and it is spreading out, but so are the services, right? I mean, it's just kind of, well, let's do a needle exchange over there and, you know, food bank over there, and we need to get some more support over there. That expands out. So does the activity. How can it be fixed? I wish I had the answer as I still love Seattle and believe that it is one of the most beautiful and unique cities in the USA. And that's what I get so much input from is man, I am so sorry to hear about your city. That sucks. And if you if you watch these documentaries, you want to you're going to be led to believe that it is the entire city. It is not. And that's the point of this podcast is to say, yep, it is happening. And yes, those situations, absolutely, they are out there. And they are going on. But it's only a small area, small areas, by other city standards, it might, this is probably just terrible. And you know, it's overrun. But Seattle's always had kind of these sections that have been just like Portland, just like Chicago, just like DC, just like New York, they've always got sections that are like, ah, oh, yeah, don't take your wife there after 10, you know, 9pm, whatever it is. Don't take your kids there after dark, you might step on a needle and you might also get jumped, you might steal your wife's purse, you get robbed you know, and that's in a good scenario, you might get shot, that could very well happen, a lot of shootings, shooting them up. So people contact me and reach out to me and say, Hey, I'm so sorry, you know, and then they'll give me what their city has done, or they'll talk to me about what's happening in their city. A lot of people also recommend, hey, check out what's happening in Venice, California, check out what's happening in Skid Row in LA. I mean, these are all areas where this this situation has just exploded record numbers of everything to do with that kind of stuff number of people on the street, number of overdoses, number of shootings, just crime in general, homicides, all just exploding. Those are not, again, stats that you want to see going up, you want those to go down, record setting numbers in a bad way, not a good thing. So most people always say, hey, I wish I had an answer for you. And I hope things get better. But I don't think they will. And that's kind of where I'm at. And my thing is, all right, if we're not going to do much about it, I'm going to talk about it. I'm just gonna, all right, here's what here's what's going on. And you guys seem to like to hear it. So I'm just going to keep on it going. All right, if you haven't seen the documentaries, uh, this says I'll save you the trouble of having to look them up. And you can see this on KATS Yakima's rock station. I always love the way that the announcers uh, do the rock stations. It's so ah, this is what we're doing. Because that's rock and roll, right? Um, do you still or will you soon visit Seattle? Why or why not? Let us know by sending us a message via our free mobile app. So that's that's also a question or, or uh, um, that's the end of this article, but I'm going to keep going here for a little bit. That is also something that um, I hear all the time is, yep, Seattle is a no go as far as tourism, as far as um, bringing people to, you know, do anything business wise in Seattle and downtown Seattle, it is a no go. If you can't get past 
the homeless on the sidewalk. And if your people are feeling threatened for whatever business they have going on in town, that's not a good look. So if there's any, you know, if you have any control over, you know, tourism with your industry, you are going to veer away from Seattle, you are going to veer away from, uh, you know, Portland, and, um, you know, that's a massive hit on Seattle business, that our leadership is not really taking into consideration. I think they are just putting their heads in the sand and going, well, I hope this gets better. Let's give them another shoot up site. Let's 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 care for our fellow human beings. Let them do what they want. Let them shoot themselves to kablooey with whatever drugs that may or may not be their last fix. I mean, that is that is unfortunately what's happening. And we don't have a real end in sight. Um, so in these areas, yes, heavily impacted. Seattle is dying. I wouldn't say Seattle is dying. I would say a handful of small neighborhoods are they are they are in need of some renovation. They are in need of some CPR. They need some help. And everybody knows it. But political leadership in Seattle is just like, la, 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 la. Let's just let this go. Maybe it'll get better. If we reimagine and rethink it, getting better, you know, if you think it, they will come. Oh, wait a minute. That's not it. It's if you build it, they will come. If you think it, nothing will happen because you're just thinking about it. You're not doing anything. That's been my whole thing is you got to do something. I'm not a social worker. I'm a real estate guy. And I know when you have expansion of this kind of record setting statistics, that's not a good thing for real estate. What's crazy is that some of the properties in these areas, I'm looking at the numbers going, wow, this this crime and surge is really not impacting things. And that can only happen in a global pandemic where real estate has gone to historically high levels of property values. We have historically low inventory. I mean, you've just got this perfect storm of craziness. You can't get the homeless out. You can't sweep their camps. But if a property comes on, it's probably still going to sell in a, you know, the property nearby to these encampments. If it comes on and if it's anything other than a studio or a one bedroom, it's going to sell with multiple offer situation. It's going to be outbid. It's going to be bid way over price. Some of the some of the things I've been dealing with lately is yesterday we had a, an offer with 17 or a deal with 17 offers. Our buyer was the winner, but I, were they really the winner? Because they paid like 250 grand over list price and a million dollar home. And at the end, they had to cough up an additional 20 plus grand just because earnest money fully, ref or you write a check right to the seller right off the bat. I mean, these are this is the competition that you're facing in a city like Seattle, where we have two weeks of inventory. So it doesn't matter how much of this crime goes on. If the property's in a decent area, even if it's in these areas, it's still going gangbusters. And people are like, ah, oh, you got to wait for all those property prices to come down. Well, urban land uh, economics kind of dictate otherwise, if you don't have any supply, and you have big demand, everybody's saying, well, you got to wait for all this crime to really impact things. It's going on. And guess what, there is such little inventory right now. The market's still just cruising right along. And a lot of people are like, oh, Seattle property values, there's no way they can be as high as they are. Oh, guess what? They are. And it is brutal because at Summit Properties Northwest, I think we have 110, 115 brokers, somewhere like that. And the biggest struggle that I have every single day throughout the Puget Sound market, and that is from Canada down to Oregon, there is nothing for the buyers to buy. They want to take advantage of these historically low interest rates. And they can't because there's nothing to buy. So even when they do find something that's in a hood neighborhood that is that is rough and that crime stats are out there, if it's in a secured building, all right, I'll take my chances. That thing's a little bit discounted because, you know, if you run from your car, which is on the street to the front door of the project, you may or may not get shot and or, you know, accosted for various reasons. But once inside, once you're in your security building, you're okay. I'll take it. You need you need 5% over list price? I'll take it. Who do I make the check out to? Where, where do I sign up for this living the dream in Seattle, even though Seattle is dying? And the fight for the soul of the Seattle 
is ongoing. I butchered that, didn't I? The fight for the soul of Seattle is ongoing. I put the ongoing thing in there. So yeah, this stuff is happening. It's not as dramatic as the media makes it out to be, but it is pretty bad. It's not as far reaching, I guess, would be my way of describing what is being shown because what is being shown is in, you know, a few block area, and also a handful of neighborhoods um, throughout the Seattle area. It's not everywhere. And, and on the east side, and by east side, we say east side, big lake, big lake, just east of, um, of Seattle. And I'm on the other side of that lake, Lake Washington. And we don't have much of this stuff at all because our political leadership here isn't progressive. They aren't so in love with their fellow human being that they're letting them do just whatever willy nilly. No, we've got laws here. And fortunately, the police where I live, they enforce them. And so do the prosecutors. And so do the judges. Shocking how that works. It's, it's just this amazing conundrum, because a few miles over that away, things are different. It's a different drill. There's different stuff on the sidewalks, different people walking around, guns going off, stuff you don't see a few miles out. So if you get a chance, watch Seattle is Dying. That's the first one. And the fight for the soul of Seattle. That's the second one. That's the one that's more recent that came out. More recent one, I've covered a handful of the topics there. Um, it's wild stuff. It's like, really? That is really going on in a city, city as big as Seattle? Nobody's really doing much about it. Yep, that is right. And I'm going to leave you with a quick story. And that was I was, where was I? I was parking and going to, oh, I can't remember, someplace right by the Pike Place Market. And so I had to park a few blocks away because it is so jam packed down there. I mean, it's like, you know, any major urban area, there's just no parking and it's hard to get around. And so you find whatever parking lot you can and you park your car and you hope that security's okay. I think I had one of my kids with me. And by kid, I mean, you know, 24, 28 year old adult, who was a couple of years back had them with me. And I remember walking by on a street corner, it was a street corner of 7 Eleven, we had gone inside for who knows what snack, walk out and there is a guy. There's one guy just smoking a joint, there's a handful of them sitting around, somebody is selling like some kind of stolen whatever it was. And then there's another guy just openly doing a drug deal, I mean, on the sidewalk. And this is just a community of people homeless doing that. And I was like, Oh, yeah, this is not good. We need to walk to the other side of the street where this, this action isn't going down. I can watch out from what's going on there. And it was one of those those aha moments where you go, mm, this is not good, because this is happening right out in the open. These people are so brazen about what they're doing. This is not safe, because that means there's no cops around. And even if they do call the cops, nothing is going to happen. Because why would you arrest somebody if they're just going to get let back out and they're just going to go right back to their criming without any interruption to their lifestyle whatsoever? You're not going to arrest those people. You're not even going to show up for those calls. So unless somebody gets hurt, drug dealer on the corner, ah, we let that go. That's child's play. You want us to come out, show us a good stabbing, show us a good shooting, you know, maybe a murder. That's what they're reacting to right now. That's, that's unfortunately, in the downtown course, that's about all that they can handle. That's all they can get to. They make, you know, the police make their effort, but they're getting defunded. They're being reimagined. They're being rethought about. And in the meantime, crime stats go up. So police, I don't blame the police. I blame the people, you know, running the law side of thing, the prosecutors, you know, the judges. The city politicians, our mayor, city council, we love our fellow human being. Just let them do their thing. Just let them be. We need to support them in their hour of need. Never mind that they've done the same crime 76 straight times. Still love you. Do better next time. Make better decisions. That's what we've got going here in Seattle. And it's the same a lot, across a lot of other cities. And that's why I talk about it here in the Seattle, Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So thank you so much for uh, joining. Check out those documentaries. They're pretty interesting, if nothing else. Um, 
But if you have any kind of depression going on, probably or anxiety, don't watch them. It'll just make you upset. It'll just make you kind of nervous like, oh, I've got this dramatic uh, background music. It's just that real kind of tense. Ah, I'm on edge kind of thing. So if you got that, don't watch him. Tune into the Seattle Real Estate Broadcast. Why not? Why not? All right. Thanks again for being here. I'll catch up with you guys soon. Talk then. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.